you really need to have a 20 to 30 year plan for how what what kind of investment assets are you going to build up. What's up, guys? Welcome to another 5 Minute Fatherhood. So in our Facebook group, in the 5 Minute Fatherhood Facebook group, you guys can look for that if you want to jump in there. We got a great question from Rance. Can ministry professionals build family assets? He says, hey, Jeff and Jeremy, my question is, is it possible to build a multi-generational family team while serving as a missionary whose only income comes through the donations of ministry partners? How would you encourage those who are called to this lifestyle to build assets and position their family for maximum kingdom effectiveness? Um, Okay, so... I do think not only is it possible, but it's critical for ministry yeah. professionals to build family assets. This is, I don't think that anyone is exempt. You know, it's interesting. One, I've, I had a conversation with one of my friends who's a lifelong pastor, and he, uh, he told me, he's like, um, he, he read in, he was thinking about himself as, a, as sort of a type of Levitical priest, and he said, the Levites didn't have assets, the Levites didn't have land, and so just like me, you know, those of us who are called to ministry, um, we're like Levites, we don't have land, we don't have assets. Um, but there are, there are like multiple chapters, there's several chapters in Joshua, there's several chapters in the Prophets, and several chapters in the Torah that specifically outline all of the assets that the Levites actually owned. So what we know is that they didn't have a plot of land that was completely theirs. Uh, all the other uh, 11 tribes actually had a le- plot of land together. The Levites had cities that were scattered throughout the 11 other 11 tribes, and they were given all the land, the pasture land around those cities. And so every single Levitical family had assets and yeah. had land. They only served in the temple uh, during dur- during seasons. It was a seasonal job. The rest of the year... Uh, and the rest of their life, when they weren't in that very specific couple decades where they served, they were working their land like every other person in Israel. Um, so there really isn't a precedent for that I know of in the Bible for for a father who can say, "I don't need any. I don't need to think about this. I don't think about long term assets. Don't need to think about that." Um, that kind of thinking doesn't really exist in the Bible. Uh, it exists big time today. And so this is a great question that Rance asks. And so what I would say, you guys is that if you're if you're a mis- ministry professional or a missionary you really need to have a 20 to 30 year plan for how what what kind of investment assets are you going to build up and you have to be incredibly disciplined about setting aside enough of that money so that every single month you're building into whatever that investment is so if you decide to invest in real estate one of my friends whose parents were missionaries they were very disciplined about buying a couple of houses like every like they bought like a house every like five years. And so after about 20 or 30 years on the mission field, they came home, they had 40, they had about four or five houses. They were all being rented out. They were all being, they, they were, got a lot of support from their church community in terms of uh, making sure these assets were protected. And uh, they, they happened to have bought them in areas um, that had appreciated incredibly in value. So when they retired, they actually retired really, really well off. Um, as missionaries, and they were always living very frugally, but they were very disciplined about this investment strategy that they they stuck with. And so, when the Lord called them away from uh, that place, they they ended up having you uh, know a couple more decades where they were no longer missionaries. But thank God they had been disciplined about building family assets, and then these family assets turned out and really blessed my friend and some generations that were downstream. Uh, so I don't think that there is exemption from that. But Jeff, what are your, what are your thoughts on this? Oh, lots of thoughts. I was even talking about this with Alyssa, you know, even given some of the coronavirus scare and stuff like that. And this is, I want to say this sensitively, but one thing we have processed through is like, um, we're like, because we were talking about like, man, is it bad to like hoard resources, right? And like, that was kind of the word I think we were talking about and using it. And I said, no, we're not hoarding resources. It's like a storehouse so that we can feed people. You know what I mean? Um, And Mm. then so it's like kind of in moments of crisis, you know, you can lead better when you have assets. You can actually be a leader in moments of crisis or moments of like when things are tough or the money's pinched because you then have resources to kind of start deploying, right? You get right. fed, you get fed, you get served, you get helped. Um, and building assets puts you in that position. Not building assets tends to not put you in that position. Um, and so that was one thing I was like, man, I'm actually really humbled that we are sometimes in some positions where I'm like, okay, because we were trying to be shrewd enough with some of these and they're multi-year projects. Like it was, we worked really hard last couple of years and then we can be like, oh, okay, we can try to step into this moment. And there's moments where that's not true. You know, you take risks and it just, it bombs or whatever. But, um, but then that, I would say that another thing is too, like developing this actually lets you do ministry better. Kind of like what I just alluded to that point. Like it actually, like we pit them against each other of like building assets versus being in ministry. You really want to do ministry, build assets. 
because that's that'll right. allow you to actually get more time and focus. Because here's what really happens. The 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 poetic dream is like, oh, I don't need to build assets. The Lord will provide. Amen. He will. But I think that's just like a weird conflation. Um, and what the reality is like, oh my goodness, 90% of my day is spent stressing about what I'm going to eat or how I'm going to provide. <laughs> so it's like we have this yeah. like poetic dream, but actually our day to day is just 75% of our energy is wasted. Not on people, not on serving them, not on loving them, but just like crisis and stress. Right. Yeah. And the totally. way you alleviate that is by actually allowing the Lord in his shrewdness to use you to build things that are not hoarded, but are actually deployed for other people to serve and to love them. And you actually can free yourself up more to do ministry if you are wise. Right. If you're that's wise right. with actually building infrastructures and systems. And so I think that's a big, big difference. I think that's huge. I, I just remember that one of my buddies uh, just came off the mission field a few months ago or about six months ago in order to spend a couple of years building assets to go back to the mission field. And he's really crushing oh, I love it right that. now. Exactly. Um, yeah. And he's actually going to, his goal is to go donation free because he's, his business is, uh, he's got, got a real estate business that's growing really fast. So uh, yeah, I think there's ways to do this guys. I think it's important not to, I think where a lot of guys who are missionary or ministry minded actually with it. And I had this for, I was in ministry for about eight years and I, I actually didn't want to think about money. I, I wanted to abdicate this. I'm like, I don't, that area just feels messy, a little dirty, a little distracting. Yep. Um, and uh, and unfortunately I gave into that and I don't think that that was biblical. Um, I think that it can be obviously a challenging thing to think about, but it's really important not to withdraw totally from the world when you're a father. Maybe if you're a single missionary, you don't have a family, there's an argument for that. I don't think there's a good argument if you're a dad whose kids are growing up and they're they're going to need to um, you're going to need to integrate with them as a team, uh, multi-generationally. Yep. I think that you, you have a lot of responsibilities there to think about money and to think about the future. Um, and you guys, if you want to hear more about this, I tell my whole story of how I made this transition from ministry into thinking about family and family assets in a book called Family Revision. And so you can grab that on Amazon or familyteams.com. Uh, you can check that out. It's also on Audible.